Okay, so here we are in Stramra. We have arrived in Scotland and we're just here at the uh, charge point. And here is Peter Bracken. And here we are on the ID3, kindly donated for this trip by Connolly's. Peter, what do you make of it so far? Oh, lovely, lovely. It's absolute pleasure to drive. Look, every electric car is so much easier to drive. Half the time it's just driving itself. So, uh, and we've got some free charging from Charge Place Scotland, which is great, especially for road to COP26 EV drivers all over Europe. We're all driving to Glasgow to uh, talk all about electric cars and how good they are for the environment and uh, how we can reduce our car footprint. So, uh, yeah, but absolutely delighted with the ID3. It's it's a big car, you know. We've, I've driven from Castle Bar via Dublin up to Larne, across to Stranlar here in Scotland, and uh, yeah, pleasure to drive. Fantastic. Well, we'll get this charge done, yeah. and then we're gonna start heading up towards uh, Glasgow and Falkirk, where we're staying later. So. We're here um, in Kelpies in Scotland and there are the Kelpies behind um, doing a promotional thing for all things electric cars so I have my Volkswagen ID4 here with Tesla with a young lad inside playing computer games he's playing a driving game on the screen on his Tesla there's his dad we've got so they're, they're over from the Netherlands, we've a few German lads, people from all over Europe have driven here. We'll be Portugal, um, Estonia over at the end, okay, so we're, uh, people have driven all over Europe, so it's possible to drive from all over Europe to Scotland to uh, see, to COP26, road to COP26, to just promote how great electric cars are and they can do the job that any petrol or diesel car can do. And no one here got stuck anywhere along the way. It's all good. Drive on. Uh, I'm here actually uh, with uh, Simon Acton, who's the chairman of the Irish EV Owners Association. I'm a committee member and uh, we're over to meet all these lovely people to talk about all things electric vehicles and how driving an electric vehicle can be so good for the environment, especially when renewable energy is used to power the cars. And uh, yeah, if you can walk, walk, if you can cycle, cycle, if you can use public transport, obviously much better than driving, even an electric car, but certainly uh, it's a step in the right direction. Drive on! I'm in Falkirk at the moment, and this zero carbon tour bus uh, just rocked up. So Simon, did you find out what this was? Look at it, it's a spaceship. The VW XL1 is some sort of record breaking uh, efficient car, but it's, it's not fully electric, it's a hybrid I believe. Oh, hybrid, oh, wow. But I don't know much about it. <laughs> Do you reckon I'd fit in it? I think we're going to find out, aren't we? <laughs> right, I'll hand you over this. Well. Go for it. Let's see what you can. Where can I get in? <laughs> I'm not sure if I can get out. Ah, uh, that's a problem. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that doesn't look comfy. Oh, Jesus. Your head's going to be in it. Yeah, I wouldn't shut the door. Close the door. <laughs> 
Maybe. You signing up for one of these then? Uh, not quite yet. Maybe <laughs> right just to see. I don't I, think it. I, I tried. Maybe to... do the boy racer and your run back, Johnny. We're going to have a quick run through of all the electric cars here at the Arnold Clark Innovation Centre where you can come and test drive any electric car. You can get all the information you want from professional um, uh, educators who will tell you all about electric cars and they're not trying to sell you, it's all about education, it's not about trying to sell you anything, so in a comfortable environment. So, Simon, what's this car okay. here? So, I mean, we've come to COP um, on behalf of the Irish EV Owners Association, myself and Peter, um, basically to promote electric mobility and how that can help with more sustainable living. So that's why we're here, first of all. Um, but yeah, this is an amazing place, and most of the cars here are either fully electric or hybrid. Most of them are fully electric. So just to give everyone back at home an idea of like the variety of electric cars that are currently available, um, I mean, all of these cars are probably available in Ireland as well. So we're just going to have a quick mm. spin around all the cars. So yeah, this is the Honda E. This is these have been out about a year now. I first test drove one of these. Uh, with Honda back in Dublin. Um, so, Louder. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great, great little car. Um, this is the Corsa E, um, 50 kilowatt battery on these. I've driven one of these as well about a year and a half ago. These are about 18 months old. So, yeah, another good compact car, good choice. The Mini, um, yeah, like driving any of them any of the minis, a fantastic driver's car, um, it just has an electric engine instead of a, a regular ice engine, so yeah, so better for choice. Better for future generations all these cars. Yeah, drives amazingly. Um, this is quite a new one, so the Skoda Enya, obviously this is a, a different prospect to the other three we've just seen, um, big family SUV, um, yeah, built on the same platform as the VW ID4 and the um, the Audi, uh, Audi now have a version built on the same platform as well. Brilliant Simon, we're playing a blinder. Mercedes EQC, so okay. this is a nice expensive one. Um, if you're in the top end of the market, this is a really good choice. Again, big, big chunky SUV. Um, great if you're looking for something more luxurious, I guess. Yeah. Um, the original of the species, well yes. not quite, but the Nissan Leaf's obviously been around here for over 10 years now. This version's been out since um, end of 2017 here in the UK, at least 2018 in Ireland. Um, brilliant car. Yeah, can't go wrong with the Leaf. Yeah. Uh, the original Hyundai Ionic. Uh, Hyundai have kind of rebranded all their car, electric cars as Ionic now, but this is the original. Um, I think this version, yeah, this is a newer version. These have a sort of, uh, I think it's a 38 kilowatt hour battery. So yeah, these are very efficient cars and owners love them, generally. Again, another more expensive one, the original Audi e-tron. Of course, Audi are branding all of them out their electric cars e-tron now, but this is the original. Um, these go for something between 1900k back in Ireland. So again, an expensive prospect, but a great luxury car, if you're looking for a luxury car. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so this is the this is the Kona, which a lot of people recognise, of course. Um, and this is actually we don't have these facelifts, the electric ones yet in, in Ireland. So come around the front, please. Yeah. So it's got a bit of a restyled front oh, end, oh yes, which I think is much nicer than the, the original one, much tidier. So that's a good, great car, um, compact SUV. Um, you know, perfect for a small family. People say the boot's a bit small, so something to consider if you're thinking about one of those. Yeah. Oh, this is my size type of car. This is, yeah, you fit in there, not a problem. <laughs> yeah, um, just me. Love this, haven't seen any of these in Ireland yet. I think they're coming soon, but yeah. Electric Fiat 500. What can you say about that? What can you say? Fantastic <laughs> little car. That is going to be yeah. they will fast. Yeah. They will 
Uh, Where are we going next? We're going towards, what's that there? The Renault, the Renault Zoe. You're right. Um, so this is the, the newer, the latest version of the Zoe. So the Zoe's been around a long time, since 2013. But these ones came out a couple of years ago with the, the facelift and the much nicer interior. Okay. Um, yeah, we, I, I've sold a lot of Zoe's. Again, great small family car. All right, so what's your business? My business is next eco car, so Brilliant. I sell used EVs. Brilliant. When I'm not doing things for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to confess to not knowing much about these. We don't have these in Ireland, but these oh, are the cool. electric smarts. Um, oh, so nice. this is uh, the kind of the original smart concept with just the, the two seats, and then there's uh, the, the four seats version over there. Um, I, I, I don't know much about these, haven't driven them, but yeah. if you're looking for something compact, yeah. they'll be a great fit. I remember Sebastian Chabal, a great uh, back rower for France, back when I played, played against Sebastian, and uh, he used to drive around in, uh, in a smart car, a man that's six foot five, about you know 18 stone of muscle, oh, uh, absolute, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, if he can fit in that, then then so can most people, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, he might even go electric. So, if anyone knows Sebastian, uh, please get, <laughs> yeah, let's get him in the car, okay. Um, yeah, this is a, a car I'm quite familiar with. I test drove this for MG back in Ireland, uh, the MG ZS. Again, it's a kind of mid-sized compact SUV. Um, these are made in China. They're, they're really competitively priced, but it's a great car. Yeah. Um, really nice inside. Um, yeah. Is that the MG5 or the ZS? The ZS. The oh. 5 is the estate, and oh. I don't think they've got one of those here. Okay. We've been uh, saying to the likes of the Department of Transport and the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland that we need something like this in Ireland because otherwise people are going into a sales environment to learn about electric car cars and that probably isn't the best thing. What you need is independent advice. So uh, SEAI, Department of Transport, we need to land something like this in Ireland so people can learn, take their time to see all about the different cars and the, the pros and cons and so on, um, and then make an informed decision before they go into a sales environment and uh, decide and make a purchase. We're in the cars. First time we've actually had to get in the car so far in Glasgow. We've done most of the walking, which is the most sustainable way to get around, but just needs must at the moment. So how have you been finding COP26, Simon? Yeah, great. I really enjoyed um, meeting up with all the other drivers who came in their EVs from all across Europe, um, as far afield as Portugal and Slovenia and Sweden, which is pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, most of those, those guys are heading their way home now, so we're kind of getting into some of the more um, UK-centric events, I guess. Um, I think yesterday we tried to get to the green zone, and failed by walking which is why we're in the car today because um, a lot of the a lot of the streets near the events are shut off and you just can't get through we spoke to some very uh friendly uh policemen that's right um, yeah but yeah today we're taking it yeah straight ahead yeah uh, simon's obviously navigating uh, yeah, we're making a bad job of this just at the moment <laughs> yeah Anyway, yeah, the, um, we, that's why we're in the car today, because whilst um, where we're trying to get to, it would be walkable, um, you can't get through, um, you need to go kind of around the outside, so uh, that's what we're going to try today, and as Peter said, this afternoon we've got a, an event back at the Arnold Clark Centre, which we've been to, Innovation Centre, which we've been to a couple of times already, um, but it's a, a different group of people again, so a lot of the events, the fringe events are being hosted there. Um, yeah, so um, we're going to hopefully meet a lot more EV industry people and then there's a there's a black tie dinner this evening, which we're looking forward to as well. So, so here we are in Glasgow. Uh, we finally managed to get into the uh, green zone at the uh, Glasgow Science Centre. So yeah, it's a stunning place here, as you can see. So yeah, we're going to go in now and see what we can find.
So um, we're on the M1 motorway um, from Belfast heading back down to Dublin to drop Simon Acton off and uh, Simon's the chairman of the Irish Electric Vehicle Owners Association. So we're on the way back from COP26, the UN Climate uh, Summit and we've had a day driving there, three days there and now a, a day driving back and fantastic experience on my uh, part and uh, Simon how, how did you like the whole experience and how do you think um, the electrification of transport um, around the world is going to happen or is it going to happen? Well yeah it is definitely going to happen yeah. and I think you know first of all just to say what a positive experience the whole thing has been um, we we drove from from well you started in Mayo but you yeah. picked me up in Dublin and we drove up to Belfast and across on the ferry into Scotland and, and on to Glasgow and Falkirk was the, the farthest east we went but yeah um, and absolutely zero issues but I think what's more impressive is a lot of the guys we met up with came from a lot further afield than that um, as far afield as Portugal Sweden Germany and so on and you know Everyone, everyone has had a successful trip and proven really that long journeys in electric vehicles are already doable, are already, doable. Are already, already happening in inter-country basis in Europe. So, yeah, it's it's been entirely positive, and I think from the point of view of you know all the people we've met and we've you know we've talked to obviously a lot of people who were. EV people, so to some extent you're, you're preaching to the converted already, but I think we've also talked to a lot, of, a lot of other people along the way as well, and we've managed to pass on the message about the, you know, the positive future that's, you know, in a lot of ways already here for, for driving electric vehicles, and of course the main reason we, we wanted to highlight that on this trip was because how it can help with addressing climate change, and it's something that people could already be doing as they're changing their cars, moving to an electric vehicle um, to reduce their emissions and help reduce local pollution and um, climate change emissions as well. So. And uh, yeah, I suppose for, for me, one of the big points was meeting very um, innovative uh, people throughout the whole week and the whole positivity about all things climate but you know especially because we are concentrating on the whole transport side of things so long and short of it if you combine renewable energy with electric vehicles you can lower your carbon footprint hugely and that will help massively towards um, us basically leaving a cleaner uh, planet for future generations. We, Absolutely. yeah, we may not ourselves see the full benefit of it, but what we do now will definitely determine how, you know, my my grandkids and even my kids. It'll affect me. It's already happening. Australia's burning all this kind of stuff, um, and it'll st it'll come to Ireland within the ten years. But what we do now between in the next, you know seven eight years will determine how bad it's going to be or how good it's going to be and and we move from there but um, but one of the things that struck me is that there's hugely innovative companies like uh, GridServe over in the UK who um, have just gone in got the capital got the back end and just put in electric vehicle charging hubs um, in the UK, the first one up and running in Braintree, um, the three or four being built at the moment. Only a matter of time before these guys, uh, Toddington Harper and Sam Clark and, and, and Jerry, the, um, the um, uh, main man there will, will be coming to Ireland I would suspect. So uh, it would be a little bit of competition, a little bit of pressure put on the Irish um, four courts, like uh, um, some of the four courts, the likes of Circle K, have been very, very much. Um, they see it as an opportunity 
to you know improve what they have to get charging in there you know they know that the petrol forecourt will be an electric forecourt in the space of the next five six years so they're on the ball but they've had the learning experience from um elsewhere in europe elsewhere in europe like they're in norway they're all over europe and it's working for them there it's going to work for them in ireland there's a few other companies um in ireland that haven't had an experience that aren't fully um committed yet um but time will tell whether whether they um get on board or not for their own sake i think they want to be start getting on board pretty quick and all those problem or those issues can be solved grid serve grid serve have proven it that you can go in you can build the infrastructure you can get the business model behind it you can power everything from renewable energy and help the electric electrification of all transport and um, you know we've been really concentrating on cars um, but it's also the micro the uh, the smaller bikes scooters um, and then you're heading up towards vans trucks you know um, for me up until up to a big van uh, I think we're going electric there might be a case for clean green not dirty hydrogen but clean green hydrogen for bigger transport the likes of trucks um, airplanes ships um, that kind of stuff what, what are your thoughts on on that the whole hydrogen side of things well just before I come to that I yeah. just to say you know what what grid server doing in the UK and what they're doing differently than others is that they have big solar farms attached to their forecourt so all of the energy that they are putting into electric cars is completely green so it's coming from the sun so this whole discussion about well how are you generating the energy you're putting into your car is it coming from a dirty fossil uh, power station that's completely out of the equation if you're you're using those four courts and you know if that solution works in the UK it could work here in Ireland as well of course I think you know we we hope they will come here we don't know but we hope that you know they are, they sound like they're open to it from brief discussions we've had the last couple of days yeah um, hydrogen I think yeah the, the jury is out and you're absolutely right for larger transport like Big haulage. Um, there might be there might be space for hydrogen for those sort of vehicles. Heavy haulage, um, long distance um, trains, big boats, aeroplanes, and so on. But yeah, the important thing is that where are you getting? How are you generating that hydrogen? Um, I think one of the things I saw, you know, when we were in the green zone at COP yesterday, was DAF have a big 18-ton electric truck. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're not the only people building these vehicles, making them available already. So for some applications, um, you know, they could definitely be electric. For some that may be a longer, longer distance requirements, where the vehicle maybe is being used on a you know rotational basis with drivers and being used 24 hours a day, that might not be a solution. And that's where hydrogen might come in. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's opportunities there um, for different different power sources but I think for yeah anything smaller than a big van it's definitely definitely fully electric is where we're going yeah and uh, we saw loads and loads of electric buses all over uh, Glasgow we did yeah. we did lots of electric buses and that's great to see and you know I know we're hoping to get those in Ireland but you know I think really they should be here already they should be here. yeah yeah because they're working well in, in cities there also yeah. there's coaches like double decker coaches as well as single uh, coaches that can do up to yeah. two three hundred miles well 200 miles at the moment but that will even go up so you know I mean, there are a few here in Ireland already but it's very small scale and, you know I think I think the, the, the case has been proven that it could be done on a, yeah. on a wider basis as long as the the infrastructure's in place. Brilliant. Fortunately, we didn't get to see Greta Thunberg while we're over there. I'm really uh, disappointed. Or David Attenborough. Uh, yeah, I know. We had an appointment. We had it made. He said, Peter, <laughs> can we meet? I said, David, look, I've only a few days or whatever. So, look, maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> we live in hope. We live in hope. Cheers. Drive on, everyone.